If you're wanting to learn backend development, this is a perfect project for you. We're going to be creating a simple file sharing application. And the reason this is such a good backend project is because it touches on all the most important backend concepts. We have everything from routing, server setup, database integrations, file storing, password management, and so much more. With that said, let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And first, I just wanna demo the project we're gonna be building so you can see everything that's going on in this project. As you can see, we have a file picker over here. We can choose any file we want to upload. For example, file one, let's just upload that. And we can give it a password or not. If we don't give it a password and we click share, it's going to give us a link to that file. We can send that to our friend. They can click on this link and they're automatically gonna get prompted to download that file. No password needed. But let's say we have a file we want to secure with a password. Let's say file two, for example. Now we're gonna type in a password such as test, click share. And again, it brings us back to the same page and gives us a new link. When we click on that link, you can see it asks us to put in the password. If we put in the wrong password and click download, it's going to say incorrect password. While if we type in the correct password, click download, it's going to download that file for us. And best of all, we're also supporting things like keeping track of how many times different files are downloaded and so on, all inside of our database. So this project covers all of those different concepts and it's actually pretty simple to build. Now to get started with this project, I have a completely blank folder open. And the very first thing that I wanna do is I wanna run npm init. I'm just gonna pass dash y, which is just gonna default all the options for us. So as you can see, that's just giving us a package JSON file. If this gives you an error, it means you need to download node. I have a full video on that. I'll link it in the cards and description for you. Now, once that's done, we want to install the dependencies we're going to use for this project. And there's quite a few. So we can say NPM I, that stands for install, and we can list out each individual dependency. So the first dependency we're going to need is express. That's going to be for handling all of the routing and server side logic. Next, we're going to do mongoose. That's going to be for integrating with our MongoDB database, since we're going to be using a MongoDB database. The next library I want to install is called Malter. This library just takes care of file uploads for us because by default, Express doesn't handle them, so this makes it a little bit easier for us. Next, we're going to have a library called EJS. This is our templating language, so when we want to create our different HTML views, we're going to write this in EJS. We need bcrypt, which is going to be for handling hashing of our passwords. In order to make sure all of our passwords are secure, we're going to use this bcrypt library. And when we get to that, I'll explain it a little bit more in depth. And then finally, we're going to have a library called .env. This is just going to allow us to have an environment variables file where we can store all of our different environment variables, such as like our database URL and our port for our server. That way we can keep our information for that locally outside of the file and then use different information on our production server. Now there's one last dependency we need to install and this one is a dev dependency. So we're gonna say save dev here. And this dependency is called nodemon and it's just going to automatically refresh our server every time we make changes. That way we don't have to manually close our server and reopen it every single time. Now if we open our package JSON, you can see all these different files and dependencies that we installed are here. And in order to use nodemon, we can just say dev start is the name of our script. And we're just gonna type in nodemon script, or I'm sorry, we'll say server.js. And this is going to essentially run server.js and it's going to restart that file server.js every single time we make changes to our file and save it. So let's just create that server.js file. And this is where the bulk of our server code is going to go. Now, the very first thing I want to do in this server is just set up our basic Express application. Now, if you're confused or unfamiliar with Express, I have a full crash course on it. I'll link in the cards and description for you to check out at the end of this video. So what we want to do is we want to say const express equals require express. And that's just going to be taking the Express library we installed with NPM and allowing us to access it. And then we can call that express as a function. And we're going to store that instead of a variable called app. And this app variable allows us to essentially take all of the different server code that we need in order to set up all of our different routing. For example, we can say app.git to create a git route. And that route is going to be first and so our index page. So just our normal root localhost 3000. And what I wanna do is give it a function which has a request and a response. And these variables allow us to essentially modify how this different request behaves. This is all of our information, like our form inputs. And the response is what we send back to the user. So for our index page, this is really simple because all we want to do is send them back a page. So we can just say res.render. This is going to allow us to render one of our views and our view is just going to be called index. So we're going to render out our index view when people get to this page right here. Now, in order to start our application, we just say app.listen and we're going to pass it in a port. For example, I could pass in 3000 and that's going to listen on port 3000. Now, if I just give this a save real quick and we come down here and type npm run dev start, that's actually going to start up our server. And if we go to localhost 3000 here, 
hit enter, you can see immediately that it's giving us an error, but we're on our server. And this error just says no default view engine was specified. Essentially, we haven't told it what our view engine is yet. We downloaded that EJS library, but we haven't actually told our application to use that EJS library. So we can say app.set, and we want to set the view space engine, and we're going to set it to EJS, that library we just downloaded. Now if we save, it's going to hopefully get rid of that error, and as you can see it did, but now it's saying it failed to look up the view index. We have a views folder is where it's telling us it's looking, but it couldn't find an index file there. So we need to create a new folder called views, if I spell that correctly, and inside of here we need to create an index.ejs file. Now this by default doesn't have any syntax highlighting, so you're probably going to need to download EJS language extension. So if you're using VS Code, just find this EJS language support extension, download that, and that's going to give you code highlighting inside this file. Now to get started, I'm just gonna get the boilerplate HTML code here. I'm using Emmet to pre-populate that. If you're unfamiliar with Emmet, I have a video on that. I'll link in the cards and description for you. But inside of here, I just wanna have the really basic form input. So I'm gonna create a form element, and inside this form element, I'm gonna have a label which is gonna be for a file input, which is gonna have the ID of file. And this will just say file with a colon at the end. So there's our label. Now let's get our input, which is gonna have a type here. Whoops, type of file. We're gonna give it an ID of file. And this ID links to this for attribute right here for accessibility. And then finally, we're going to give it a name of file as well. And this name is what we actually access inside of our server.js. So when we upload our file, we're going to access it inside of here by the name we give it in our HTML, which is just file in our case. And also we want this to be required. So there's that. Let's copy this down because we're gonna have another input for our password. So I'm just gonna replace all instances of file with password. And same thing here, change that to password. So we're doing type of password, an ID of password, which links to this for tag, and we're giving it a name of password. And this is not required, this is an optional field. Finally, I wanna have a submit button. So we're gonna get a submit button, and this is just gonna say share. And then I'm going to give this page just a few rough styles, because if we save this and refresh, we can actually see this is showing up on our page, but the styling is terrible. So I'm gonna go into our form here. I'm just gonna add a style tag or a style attribute, and we're just gonna add a few basic styles. For example, I'm gonna be using grid, so I'm gonna say display of grid. And I'm actually just gonna copy over the rest of these styles because it's not really important to this video. Let me just copy that and I'll explain what they are. Let's paste that down. So we have a display of grid, we're giving it a little bit of spacing with this gap property, setting up to be two columns, and we're just giving it a maximum width in case our page is really large. And this margin right here is just centering everything for us. So now if we refresh, you can see we now have essentially two different columns. And this share button, I want to span both the columns. So down here, I'm going to give it a style. And the style is simply going to say grid column span two. And that's just going to span two full columns. Give it a refresh. And there you go. You can see that now it's spanning two columns. If you're unfamiliar with CSS grid, I'll link a video in the cards and description for you if you want to check it out. But it's not at all important to this tutorial. So now we essentially have our entire form built, but when we click this share button, it's actually just going to redirect us back to the page we're on. So if we choose a file and I click share, you can see it's just bringing us back to this same page with all the information inside of the URL. That's not really what we want. Instead, we want this form to send to our backend. So we can give it an action and we can give it a method. So the method is going to be whether you want this to be like a get request, a post request, a put request. In our case, we want it to be a post request because we're trying to post information to our server. Next, we want to give it an action, and this is like the URL we send it to. In our case, we're going to send it to a URL called slash upload. So on our server, we need to listen to a post request to this slash upload you know, URL. So on our server, we can come in here, we can say app.post to listen to a post request at slash upload. And this is going to take in that request and response and the request is going to contain all the information from our form. Now, the only final thing we need to do in our form is we need to tell our form that this is a form that contains file information. Because most forms contain like text, like passwords, emails, and so on, but very few forms actually contain files. And when you wanna send file information across to a different server, you need to tell HTML that this is actually a different type of form. So we can say ENC type, and this is going to specify the type. And you can see here we have multi-part slash form data. This is just saying we're sending across a multi-part form, and the reason it's multi-part is because we're sending a file which has multiple parts. It can't send the entire file all at once because that would be a very large file to send. It sends it in pieces, essentially. That's all this is saying. So now if we save that, we come over here, we save that. We're now sending our form to this slash upload page. And I could just come in here and I could say res.send i just so you can see what's happening. So if we come in here, choose a file, click file one, click share, you can see 
I had to refresh my page. So sorry, let's do that one more time. Click file, click share. You can see that it's sending us to that slash upload up here in our URL. And right now we're just sending down the text high. So that's working as we expect. Now we just need to take in all those form inputs and actually do something with those form inputs. So the way that we wanna do that is with that Molter library that I talked about. So all the way at the very top here, what I wanna do is I wanna do another input for that Molter. So we can say const Molter equals require Molter. And make sure I spell const correctly. And then we want to be able to tell Express essentially to use this Molter library. So in order to do that, we just need to set up our Molter. So we can say const upload, and this is a variable we're gonna get from calling Molter as a function. And this takes in essentially some options. We care about the destination option. And we're gonna to upload to a folder called uploads. So all this function right here is doing is we're saying, hey, initialize this Molter library. And what I wanna do is I wanna initialize it where all the file uploads are gonna go inside of a folder called uploads. And then it's giving us this upload function. And this upload function is a piece of middleware that we can put anywhere we want. For example, on this upload path right here, before we do our normal request information, what I wanna do is I wanna do this middleware. I wanna say upload.single, because I'm gonna be uploading a single file. And in our HTML, we gave this a name of file. So what this little bit of code right here is saying, before we handle our request, I wanna do something else. I wanna do this uploading of a single file with the name file. And Molter is going to take care of all the logic for us to upload that file. So now if I just give this a quick save, make sure I get rid of this import that was there accidentally, give it a save, we go back here, we'll make sure we're on localhost 3000, choose a file, let's choose file two, and we're gonna click share. You can see if we look over on the left here, we have an uploads folder and inside that uploads folder, we have our file. Now these files are completely empty, so that's why you don't see any content inside of it, but you can see that we have those files, which is exactly what we want. And they're being uploaded with a completely random name, which is good because if we uploaded two files with the same name, we don't want them to overwrite each other because two people could be uploading a file with the same name and they're different files. So it gives it a random name, which is perfect. And we can use that name to save it inside of our database. So in order to connect to our MongoDB database, we're using that mongoose library. So I can come up here, I can say const mongoose equals require that mongoose library. So we can use that mongoose library. And then we can say mongoose.connect. And what we need to do is pass it a URL to our database. Now I'm gonna do this inside of an environment variable so I can use a different URL in development and production. So to do that, we can say process.env. And I'm just gonna call it database URL. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the port that we're listening on way down here. I wanna change this to a variable called port. Now in order to use environment variables, we need to use the library.env. So we can come in here, we can say require that .env library, and I wanna call the config method on that library. And all this is going to do is pull in the environment variables from a .env file. So I can come in here, create a .env file, and I can say database URL, and I can pass it a URL, and I can say port, for example, is going to be 3000. Now for our database URL, we can just say mongodb colon slash slash 127.0.0.1, that points towards localhost, and we wanna just name our database file sharing. Now this first part of the URL is really important. This should be the same for you as it is for me. And the second part can be anything you want. It's just the name of our database. Now, one important thing to note is you need to have MongoDB installed on your computer. So if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, I have a full tutorial on it. I'll link in the cards in description. So now with that done, we can go over to our server and you can see we have that database URL being used right here. So hopefully you can see we no longer have any errors. We're connecting to our Mongoose database. Now this doesn't really help us with anything because we don't have any mongoose you know, files or models set up yet. So let's actually create a model and use that. What I wanna do is I wanna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this models. And inside this models folder, I wanna create a file. I'm just gonna call it file.js. And this is going to be the model that represents our file database object. And now if you're unfamiliar with Mongoose, a lot of the code I'm about to write is going to look kind of confusing to you, but luckily I have a full crash course on Mongoose. I'm gonna link in the cards and description for you. So to get started with this, we need the Mongoose library. So we're gonna require that at the very top. And then in order to work with Mongoose, you need something called a schema. So we can create an object called file, and this is gonna be a new mongoose.schema. And this schema just takes in an object as its only property. And this object essentially defines the schema for how our file is going to look. So for example, all of our files are going to have like a path to where they're saved, as well as a name for that file. So we can say path is going to be a type of string, and it's going to be required. So we'll say required true. So each one of these properties takes another object defining how that property is set up. So it's a string that is required. Same thing here, we're gonna have an original name. And that's because by default, our file has this weird name, and we wanna save the name that our file was uploaded with. So when people download the file, they get the actual name of the file and not this automatically generated one. 
So the original name is gonna be exactly the same as our path. I'm just gonna copy it. It's going to be a string that is required. Next, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna specify the password. And this one isn't required and all it is is a type of string. So we can just say string like this instead of doing the full object. This is just shorthand. If the only thing you're defining is the type, you can do it like this. And that's because our password is optional. Next, I wanna have a download count. And this download count is essentially how many times the file has been downloaded. So this is going to be a type which is a number. It is required, so we're gonna say required is true, whoops, true. And we wanna give it a default value of zero because by default, nobody's downloaded the file yet when we upload it. So now we've defined what our file looks like. It's a path, a name, a potential password, and then how many times it's been downloaded. Now all we need to do is tell Mongoose to create this in our database. So we can say mongoose.model, we pass it in our file as well as our file. So this first string right here is the name of the table in our database, we call it file. And this second object is our schema. So we're saying somewhere in our database, create a table called file, and it's gonna contain all of this information. We just wanna make sure we export that. So we're gonna say module.exports equals, and now we can use this file object everywhere else in the rest of our application. So now that we have the ability to actually use this file, let's go back to our server inside of our upload. Instead of just sending the text hi, let's actually save our file to the database so that people can come and access it later. So what we wanna do is first get all the data for our file. So we're gonna create a variable called file data. And this data is going to have a path. It's going to have the original name, whoops, original name. It's going to have the password. And then by default, the download count is already zero, so we don't need to worry about that. The path right here is going to come from request.file.path. So when you use Molter and you use this upload.single, it's going to give you a property called file. So you can say request.file, and that's going to give you the exact file that you uploaded. And it's going to have a bunch of different properties. As you can see here, it has a buffer, destination, mime type, file name, path, and so on. What we care about is the path, and we care about the original name. So that's going to be the two properties we care about. And then we need to worry about the password. But this password is optional. So what I want to do, is instead of saving it right here, I'm going to create a simple if check. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? If we have a password, and a check for our password is going to be different, we need to check inside the body. So the request comes with a body property, and the body property is all of the different inputs from your form. So if we come over here, we have, you know, our file input, our password input, and so on but Molter specifically took care of our file input. So our file input doesn't show up because that was specifically covered by Molter. But this password input is handled by Express. So you can see we have this request.body, which contains our password input. So we can say request.body.password, which is the name we gave this inside of our HTML right here. That's the same name, they link up with each other. If this is not equal to null, and we wanna make sure that our request.body.password is not equal to an empty string, that means that we passed up a password, so we should use that password. So what I wanna do is I wanna take our file data, I wanna set that password property. And in order to get the encrypted version of our password, we need to use bcrypt. So I'm gonna import that library. I'm gonna say bcrypt from, I'm sorry, equals require bcrypt, just like that. And this bcrypt function, we can just say bcrypt, Dot hash. This is a function that's going to essentially take our password and it's going to convert it to a version that is impossible for people to use and steal. Because if we just saved our password as plain text, if we just, you know, said our password is our request.body.password, what this is going to do is it means anyone that accesses our database is going to have access to every single password. That is incredibly bad. So instead we need to hash this password. And if you want to learn more about security and why hashing is important, I have a full video on that. I'll link in the cards and description for you. So in order to hash this, we say bcrypt.hash. And this is going to take in our password that we want to hash, as well as something called a salt. You can either pass it in a string, or you can pass it a number, and the number is just going to do salting for you. So instead of us manually coming up with a salt, we're gonna pass a number and it's gonna do the salting for us. And without getting into too much technicality, all a salt does is make it so that no matter what password the user passes in, even if they give the same password twice, they're gonna save as different strings inside of our database, so that way people that get access to our database can't look up the fact that multiple strings are the same to know that multiple people have the same password. It's just an added step of security. Now, we just need to make sure we await this because this is a really slow function, so it does it asynchronously. So if we put await at the front here, it's going to allow us to wait for that, and we must be in an async function to use await. So this right here means that we now have an encrypted version of our password, and we have all of our file data, so let's create a file. We can say const file equals, and we wanna await creating a file by calling file.create and passing it in our file data. 
So this is just a function that creates a brand new file based on all this data we pass it, and we have our file object right here. So for now, we can just console.log out our file to see exactly what this looks like. And also I can just come in here and say res.send file dot original name. Let's say that, yeah. Okay, save. And let's go back over, upload a new file. We're gonna say file three, and I'm gonna click, I'm gonna type in a password too. We'll say one, two, three is our password. So I click share. And immediately it looks like we got an error. It says file is not defined. That's because we need to make sure we import file by saying require, and we're gonna require inside the models folder that file class. There we go. That should fix the error. Now, if we refresh our page, you can see that it printed out file3.txt. And if we look down here, I'll just expand this up, you can see all the information for our file. So you can see our path, which is where this file is uploaded, the name of it. You can see our password. And as you can see, it's a bunch of you know nonsense. That's because it took our 123 password and it hashed it into this really complex string. So that way, nobody that gets access to our database knows what my password is. I mean, it's impossible to look at this and know my password is 123. You can also see our download count is zero, and then we have our ID of our object. So this is now saved inside of our MongoDB database, which means we can actually access this file from other places. And the best way to access something from a database is going to be using this ID property right here. So we can create a new route that allows us to download files based on their ID. The best way to do that is if we just do a simple app.get, and we want to do it at slash file slash colon ID. What this does is it says, hey, if we go to the route slash file and then we pass it any string afterwards, in our case, the ID of our file, it's going to run this code right here for our request and our response, and it's going to pass it in the ID that we passed in right here. So this is allowing us to create a dynamic route. And inside of here, we just want to download our file. That's all we really care about. So what I want to do up inside of our upload is I make sure I send back a link that points right to here. So instead of console logging our file, when instead of sending this down, what I want to do is I want to render out that index page again, but I want to pass it down some options. And the option right here is going to be our file link, and it's just going to be a link to our file. So to get this file link, what we need to do is we first need to get our domain, and we're at localhost 3000. So I'm going to come in here and I want to say request.headers.origin. That's going to be essentially localhost 3000 or whatever domain we're on. So when we deploy this to a real site, whatever your URL is, this is going to be that right here. Then we want to go to the slash file route. And then from there, we want to go to our file ID. So we can say file.id. What this little bit of code right here does is it creates a brand new URL link that is pointing to this file's ID and it's just coming from our own domain. And now we can use this file link property right here inside of our index.js. So right here at the very top of our page, what I want to do is I want to essentially first put a simple if check. I want to say if our locals.file link is not equal to null, then we're going to do something. And this is kind of confusing syntax. So I'll explain just a second here exactly what this does once I finish typing this out. So the first thing that you can see in our code is we have this weird like percent bracket symbol. And all this is doing is saying, hey, all the code that comes between these brackets and percent signs, run it on the server, not on the client. So we're running this code on the server. So we're checking to see if our locals variable, which essentially our locals is just this object right here, if that object contains file link. If it contains a file link, then we want to render out a link to that file. So we can just put it inside of a div. And inside this div, we can say your file is uploaded. And then we can put a link to our file. So we can get an a tag here, which has an href. And this href is going to point directly to that file link. And in order to do that, we can just do that same exact syntax, put a file link inside of here. We can even just say locals dot. But the important thing is we're going to put an equal sign at the end of our percent symbol. And the equal sign essentially says take whatever is inside of these percent brackets and print that out into the HTML. So it's going to take our link and put it into our href right here for our a tag. Then what I want to do is I want to use this exact same text inside of our link as well. So the text of our link and the href are exactly the same. Now for our div, I just want to give it a simple style to give it some space. So we're going to say margin bottom is one REM just to give it a little bit of space. So now if I save that and I go back over to our server, you can see we're rendering out that page with that link. So let's go back to our localhost 3000. I'm going to upload a file. Let's do file two and I'm not going to give it a password. I'm just going to click share. You can see it now redirected us back to this page and it says your file is uploaded and it gave us a link to that file. Now, when we click on this link, you're going to notice it just renders forever. And that's because we're not doing anything inside of here. We need to send some result like we could say res.send hi, for example. And now that's going to send out the text hi. Or we could say res.send and we could send out the ID. So we could say request.params. These params are what we have up here. And we have a param called ID. And now you can see 
If I refresh, it prints out the ID of the file that we're accessing. So now what I wanna do inside of here is I wanna download the file. And I'm first gonna take into account situations where we don't have a password, and then we'll worry about passwords in just a little bit. So first, when we download a file, what I wanna do is I wanna get the actual file. So we can say const file is going to be equal to, I can do a wait file.find by ID. I'm gonna pass it in that request.params.id. Make sure this is an async function. All this does is it tries to find the file in our database based on the actual ID that we're looking up. Then once we have that file, what I wanna do is I wanna take our file and I wanna take the download count. I wanna add one to that. And then I wanna save our file, which is an async operation that we need to await. So all we've done is we've got our NAR file, we've incremented the download count and we're saving that file. Then I'm just gonna console.log our download count. So file.download count, just so we can see this actual download count increase. And then we need to download that file for the user. Luckily, our response has a handy download function where we can pass it in the path to our file and we can pass it in the name we want to give it, which is our original name. This is going to download the file at this path and give it this name right here. So now let's just give that a quick save and I'm gonna refresh our page. And you can see immediately it's asking me to download that file. So we know that this has worked and you can see our download count down here on the bottom left is one. If I refresh the page to download again, you can see our download count has increased to two. So we have our download count working, we have the actual download working, now the only step left for us to do is to get the password portion to work correctly. So if we just go back here to our upload and we upload a brand new file, file three, and we want file three to have the password one, two, three, and click share, and now that file is uploaded. Now when I click this link, it's going to download the file immediately because we're not taking into account the password. So we need to check to see if a file has a password. If so, then we need to do some logic to make sure that we redirect to a password page. So before we do any of this code up here, what I wanna do is a simple if check. I wanna say, hey, you know what? If file.password is not equal to null, that means that our file has a password. What we wanna do is we wanna check to see if we also have a password being passed up. So we can say if our request.body.password is equal to null, well, that means we don't have a password being passed up. That means that we went to this page by clicking on the link and we didn't give it a password yet. So we need to redirect them back to the password page. So we can say res.render password. And then I just wanna return. That way we don't accidentally download the file as well. And then I'm gonna have another if check down here and this is gonna be for checking our password. But we're not gonna do this quite yet. But this is just gonna be check password, something like that. For now though, if I now go to this link, you're gonna see it tries to bring me to that password page. We're getting a bunch of errors because we have some crashes. And that's just because saying here, request.body.password equals null cannot read properties of undefined. Now, that's because it cannot read this body property. Now, you may be wondering why that is, because up here we could read the body property just fine. And the reason we could read it up here fine is because when we uploaded this page, if we remember correctly, we were uploading a multi-part form. We specify that in our HTML. So if we go back to our server here, this is a multi-part form. And Multer, when we use the Multer library like this with destination uploads and uploading a single file, this allows us to read a multi-part form. Down here, we're just using a normal form. And Express, by default, doesn't know how to use a normal form. So we need to tell it how to use a normal form. So if we go all the way up to the very top here, what we can do is we can say app dot, and we want to use a specific piece of middleware. And this middleware is called express.url encoded, and we pass extended of true. What this little bit of line of code right here does is it says, hey, I now want you to understand how forms work that are sent via a form tag inside of HTML. That's what this URL encoded part for is. And this extended true is just something that you need to add in order to make it work. And we click save. Hopefully that's gonna get rid of our errors. And if we refresh, you can see that it did get rid of that error. And now it's just saying it failed to find our view called password. And that's because we don't have a file in our views folder called password. We need to create one. We're just gonna create a new file, password.ejs with just the boilerplate code. Now this password page is gonna just use the exact same form. I'm actually just gonna copy this form exactly, paste it in here. I'm just gonna get rid of the file input and get rid of the part that says multi-part form. And then for our upload portion, our action here is actually just going to be removed completely because by default, if you don't have an action, it's just going to send to the exact same page you're already on. And then we're gonna leave this as a post here. So by default, we're just gonna resend this URL back to the page that we're already on. And here we're asking for a password. I just wanna make sure the password field is required and this should say download instead of share. So now if I refresh, you can see now it's asking us for a password and it has a download button. So now what we need to do back on our server is finish this final if check here to see if our password is actually a valid password. To do this, we need to await again and we're gonna await bcrypt. 
and we're going to be using the compare function. So this compare function right here, all it's doing, if we just fix all these parentheses, is it's going to take in a password as well as a hashed password. So it's going to take in our normal password, which is on our body, and it's secondly going to take in the hashed password, the hashed password. So this password is that really garbly goop nonsense that we converted to from just our normal password. And this right here is the password the user typed in. And this line of code is saying, hey, are these the exact same password? Is this password originally the same as the password we just typed in? If this is not the case, then we want to run something inside this if check. So if for some reason these passwords do not match, what we want to do is we want to render out our password page again, but with a message that tells the user that it is incorrect. We're just going to send down an error and say the error is true and do a simple return here. And the reason we're returning is because we don't want to download our file. We want to skip all this step down here. So we're just saying, hey, you know what? If your password's wrong, there's going to be an error property passed down to our password.ejs. And we can do that same exact thing we did over on our index up at the top here. I'm going to copy this code actually, paste it into here. And instead I want to check to see if we have any error. So if error here is true, then we want to be able to print out our error at the top of our page. So in our style, I'm just going to change here the color to red. And then I'm just going to print out an error right here. Just say that incorrect password, something like that. So now if we type in the password that's wrong, let's just say I type in a random password, click download, you can see, okay, we're getting a different error. This is good. It says cannot post to this URL. And that's because if we go back to our server, we only set up the get property, but we never set up a post request and we're posting from our form. And it's important that we post from our form because we don't want our password to be stored in the URL. Because if you use a Git request, it would be stored in the URL, which is kind of bad. So in order to get around this, what I want to do is I want to come down here, do it up here. I'm going to create a function called handle download. This is going to take in a request and a response. And inside this handle download, I'm going to take all of the code that we did in our Git request. I'm just going to paste it inside of there. So this is just doing the exact same thing. And then I want to use our handle download. And this must be an async function. There we go. So for our Git, what we could do is we say, hey, we want to do a handle download just like this. And we could do the same thing for post. And this is going to work just fine. Now, when I save, click refresh, you can see this worked fine. It said incorrect password. But this is not quite the best way to do this. The best way to do this would be to say app.route. And we could pass it in our route, which I'll copy over. And then we can come in here and say we want to have a Git request that's going to be handling download and a post request that does the same thing. By doing this, we only have to define our route once instead of twice, which just saves some duplicated code. So it's a little bit cleaner to do it this way. This does the exact same thing. So as you can see, we type in a password that's a bunch of junk, click download, it says incorrect password. We type in one, two, three, which is the correct password, click download, and you can see it now downloaded our file. Now this project was a great introduction to a lot of different backend concepts, but if you want to really deep dive and learn each of those concepts such as Express, Mongoose, MongoDB, and so on, I'm going to have videos for them linked over here as well as down in the description so you can check out all the different crash courses I have because I have so many on these different topics. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.